What's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hold on. Seems like this is a little too bright, right? <clears throat> Welcome back to the channel. New video. Today we're going to talk about... <clears throat> we're going to talk about an incident I, I slightly touched on a while back. So those of you that remember when I did um, the video about the homie Shanky... Uh, Shanky, rest in peace, um, that was killed by the cops in New Folsom Beef Facility in the 1996 riot. Those of you that remember that video um, and that story, you'll remember that I talked about that Shanky had um, stabbed somebody, right? And went to um, Ad Sake for it, caught a shoe, but they did it all wrong. He went to the bay. He wound up beating that right up, coming back. And unfortunately, he had made the statement when he went to go get his package. He said, ah, man, it's hard for me because I'm, I'm not going to say the dude's name, man. Uh, fuck. I'm going to just call him Jay. Okay. When he moved on Jay, Jay made it back to the cell, lived on the same tier with, with, with Shanky. Uh, and wound up rushing Shanky in the chow hall and beating the dog shit out of him, right? And before the Huras could break it up, Jay re, uh, uh, whispered in Shanky's ear and he said, I could have killed you tonight. He said, the next time you do something, you take him to the dirt. And so when Shanky came back, he had told us, hey, man, you know, regardless of whatever happened with him, hey, he, he schooled me because he could have killed me that night, right? And he said, the next time I do anything, he said, everybody's going to hear about it. Watch. Unfortunately, the next thing he did was he got killed by an officer getting off in the riot. You know, and that's why we got to be careful, man. Uh, what we put out into the world. We bring that energy back to ourselves. So when you when you when you vocalize that you have intentions of doing bad shit. Bad shit comes to you. Um, so today, what I wanted to talk about is Jay himself. What he got hit over. I think it's, I think it's a good story. You know. Um, so let's tell the story. You guys know I don't script anything. I just get an idea and then we run with it. Okay. So I had landed in New Folsom. Uh, in the very, very beginning of the year, right? Uh, January, February, I think it was February, I landed in New Folsom. February 1995, okay? And there was a dude from my area, from my county. I'm not going to say what neighborhood. There was a dude from my county. He was an older dude. He had already been down over 20 years. And he was a, he was a tecato. Well, he had moved his wife minutes away from the prison right and so this bottle was getting family visits i mean it seemed like every week he got one and the reason why is because when you are near a prison you can sign up for what's called standby visits i don't know if they're still doing them but back then they had standby visits right so where if let's say i had a family visit scheduled but for whatever reason my people can't make the flight or something happened the car broke down they would have to notify the prison look we're not going to be able to make it so then they go down the line who can come in a standby visit to fill up that that room right because his lady his wife lived like 10 minutes away anytime there was a cancellation he got in there every time he came back he had the bag and he was drawing more and more attention to himself because he was always loaded he always had the bag and he was not kicking in what he was supposed to kick in he wasn't kicking in at all and so he drew some attention and um so they sent Jay to touch him up. They didn't want to lose him. They didn't want to whack him because it was a consistent bag, right? So Jay, let me tell you guys about Jay real quick. Jay wasn't, Jay was probably about 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 maybe at the most, right? But this dude looked like he was on steroids, man. 
This dude was so fucking yoked up and he had a reputation. They said in the county jail during the riots, this dude stayed knocking people out, right? He had put in work in the joint. He had a reputation. And so when they sent him on the dude from my area, he caught him over there by canteen, right? <clears throat> Anybody that's been on B facility in New Folsom, you know, there's the yellow rails down there. And the rails go up probably uh, waist level, maybe a little bit higher, depending on how short or tall you are, right? When I tell you when Jay hit this bottle the first time, and I'm telling you, they he just they just sent him to sock him up. So he learns a lesson. It was when I'm telling you that he hit this bottle and he went over the rails. That's the truth. It was like a fucking cartoon. He hit that dude and he was just like, and went over the rail. Boom, landed in the grass. Jay slowly walked around. The bottle was trying to get up and he got on his ass, right? Beat the fucking bark off of him. And um, they both went to Ad Seg. They, they did the old mistaken identity thing. So they were both able to come back to the yard. Jay, I used to kick it with Jay every day. At least a few. Hey, what's up, homie? How you doing? And he was always a very humble dude, quiet dude, feed him. And, you know, being somebody that big, that physically impressive, right? He never tried to carry himself as if he was a threat to anyone, anybody. He was always, he used to always tell me, hey, I'm your bodyguard, big dog. I'm your bodyguard. That's because I used to make him laugh all the time, right? Clowning and shit. Well, when they came back from Ad Seg, the dude from my area understood that he had an obligation, right? And I don't know why my camera's freaking out again. I think I know what it is, but... Um, he, he understood his obligation, right? And they assigned Jay to pick up from this dude every time he hit, right? That was his reward for taking care of that, right? So, you know, the dude, you know, came up on something and Jay picked it up and dropped it off where it needed to be dropped off, right? Boom. And this was happening on almost a weekly basis, like I said. And one thing that was noticeable was, um, and it's so easy to trace, is you can just walk over to somebody, the dude from my area, and say, hey, what did you bring in? Then you know what he was supposed to kick in. And then you know what you received, Right. And you know that the guy from my area, he wasn't going to shortchange nobody. So it became obvious that Jay, his greed got the better of him. And he wasn't being greedy to make money. He was getting greedy to get high. I think what, what triggered the first questions was because people noticed that Jay was high all the time. And. Um, like I said. Jay had a reputation. Jay had put in work. Jay was. Was very well liked by everybody. But stuff like that. When that guy from my area. Gate put something in Jay's hands. It didn't belong to. The guy from my area. It didn't belong to. Jay. It didn't even belong to nobody on the yard. It belonged to the legends. At that point, you can't touch that. Jay knew better. And that's the power of addiction, eh? You know, I've never been addicted to anything like that. Uh, yeah, you guys know I like to drink. I don't drink every day. When I drink, I drink to have a really good time, right? But I've never been addicted to anything. And so when I when I talk to people that have addiction, I don't know. I can't understand. I can't comprehend. And it's not my place to judge, right? But I do know him. Jay's story is one of millions. 
I promise you there's at least 10 J's right now in the system touching something like that that's not theirs, thinking they can get away with it. Good fucking dudes that have an addiction, that have a sickness, and they know they can probably die for what they're doing, and yet their addiction won't stop them. So I just wanted to touch on that, man, where I think that's why, you know, that's just a glimpse into who Jay was. He knew when he got hit that, that the jig was up, that he got caught. He went after Shanks and still schooled him in the process. I could have killed you. Next time, take a motherfucker to the dirt. He could have came out, whacked anybody he wanted. He was from the same area as Shanks. He knew his addiction got the best of him, and he knew there was no fixing it. And he still chose not to hurt somebody in a way that he could have. So that's today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I know, <clears throat> excuse me, I know because there's a lot of guys in my comment section. Not a lot, not too many women have this, but there's a lot of men in the comment section that tell me that um, they're struggling with, with an addiction and that these videos help them. And so I got to make sure that when I can, I put out one like this every now and then, right? Not just like you guys already know, I'm not going to tell a story about somebody getting whacked and somebody pinching some shit and getting washed up just to glorify it. There's a message behind everything, man. Hopefully everybody gets it. With that, everybody, please be safe, be smart, and tell the ones you love that you love them. I'm out.